Today I've got myself a PSP 3000 that is apparently bricked. What bricked means is that the system, someone tried to do a mod on it, custom firmware, and it didn't work. Well, the first thing that I did when I got it was I checked the battery. And the battery, completely and utterly dead. Uh, it won't even, I went out and picked up an external charger. And when you put it in the external charger, the external charger says, nah, there's no battery here. So that's the first problem. So solve that with picking up a brand new battery. So let's uh, first, we'll just test out the brick and see if it does the same thing. So no battery in it currently. Sorry for the incredible shiny glare of the PSP. Uh, so let's try and turn it on. So the system does power, you can see the green light there, but nothing happens. And then eventually it will just shut itself off. So that is the typical symptoms of a uh, custom firmware brick system. So the first thing we can try is, well, I can, there it goes, it shut itself off. So I'm just going to disconnect the power briefly, plug it back in. And the first thing we can try is just holding the home or the PlayStation button as we power it on and just keep holding it and holding it and we'll see if this unbricks the system and no that one that's the simplest thing didn't work, the system turned itself off. Okay, we're gonna try it again. I realized that I didn't have a memory card in. Not sure if that's required to boot up, so let's try the PlayStation button again and turn it on, holding. And I'm not even seeing the memory stick icon, like the little LED flashing to see that it's gonna, that it's even accessing it. So I don't think this is going to work. Nope. All right, so the next thing you could try is holding down the left trigger and doing the same process. Nope. All right, now the third test is the PlayStation button and the, other, and the left trigger. So let's try that. Nothing. Okay, so the next combination is the right shoulder button and square. So let's try that and see. And nope, this one is not going to work either. Okay, next button combination. Right shoulder button and the home. Turn it on. No memory card access. And no. Okay, this one is going to be a hard one to do. This one is uh, PlayStation button, start, select, square, and triangle. All at the same time. And you also have to turn it on. So you have to hold down five different buttons. So I'm going to use two, I'm going to use two, hand, two on this hand to do the PlayStation button and select and start. I'm going to use these two to hold the A and triangle together and use my thumb to turn her on. Be sure nice if this one worked. And I don't think it's gonna. Nope. Not gonna work either. So this PSP might have to go into the whole hardware realm of unbricking. So, kind of luckily, with this dead battery, I'll be able to hopefully use it to revive the system. Okay, so since the easy software button methods of resetting the firmware didn't work, coming out of a soft brick, uh, we now have to go to the full hardware brick method, which is basically making a new style uh, Pandora battery, which puts the PSP into service mode. With the PSP 1000 and some of the earlier 2000s, I believe, um, that is easily done with a Pandora battery that you can pick up 
on Amazon, eBay, all over the place. But the 3000s and the later 2000s, I think even the 2000s, this is required, were a really hard thing to, as soon as you bricked it, that was it. You were done. There was no way to get around it. But someone else has come up with a new method. Now, I am going to butcher the name of it because it could be done a different couple of different, said a couple of different ways, but it's the Byron Sweeper hardware mod, which I'll put a picture up right here uh, to show you the uh, what you have to do with it. You need a USB TTL device, uh, which is basically a serial port kind of deal. And then you create a little circuit uh, to uh, communicate to the battery terminals on the PSP. Now, I had that junk battery that didn't work, so I took it all apart, took out the shell, took out the battery, and left just the little connector circuit board in, which is right here. Let's just take this out and I'll show you. So right there, and I soldered, focus, there. So I soldered three wires to the pins, and based on the drawing picture, um, it comes down. So this is going to be uh, 4.2 volts, which we'll get from my power supply, my bench power supply, the ground, then a ground connector to go to the TTL device. Then we've got a diode. This will go to um, the TX pin on the TTL device. There is the regular pin that goes to the receive on the TTL device. Then a 3.3 volt input going to a 10K ohm resistor. And that also goes on to the same. So all of those go onto the same wire into uh, the pin on the battery. It goes into the middle pin. And then normal ground, which will go onto the TTL device and to the bench power supply. And that will hopefully... Uh, bring this hopefully start to bring this back to life but that's not just the battery that you have to build in order to do this you have to create a special memory card with some recovery software on it so um, I've got my memory uh, one gig memory stick pro duo card that I put in and ran the software on the computer and I'll put in some clips of that now you just download it run it follow the steps and it uh, sets it up for you so I'm going to put this into the PSP, take out my 2 gig, and put in this one that has the software on it. Okay, so the next thing you have to do is you have to set up special software on your computer. So the first thing you have to do is you have to download uh, Python. Once you have Python installed, you go to this convenient website here. I will put a link to it down below. And it has the steps. It tells you exactly what you need to do. Okay. So here is the little TTL device, the USB TTL device I got off Amazon. Not expensive. Not expensive at all. This is one of the ones they suggest. Um, so what I have to do now is hook up these pins to here so it came with some cables but we're not going to need those so let's move those out of the way and then we just have to plug this into the computer and then run the byron sweeper software on the computer at the same time as we plug the battery into the psp then the software will search for the psp and try to bring it back to life if it works we should see some stuff on the screen. All right, so let's see. So we need to hook up the power line to the 3.3 volt pin, which is this one right here. Then the, so if we go back to our drawing, so then the transmit line or the receive line is the middle pin off of here. So everything's labeled on the actual board here. It's a little bit different than the picture uh, in the stuff. So it's got 3.3 transmit, receive, uh, and then ground and DTR is up at the top. So the next one is going to be the line from the diode, which is gonna go onto there. 
And then finally ground. It goes on to there. Okay. So then we've got the two lines here for power and ground that are going to come from my bench power supply, which I'll take the battery out so I can hook these up. Okay. Uh, you may need to install drivers for your TTL device, so make sure you know which one it is and know where to find them. Okay, here we go. And it's not working. It's not detecting my, my PSP. I wonder if it's the pins of the battery terminal just not working. Well, maybe it's not getting power. Let's try just putting regular power in through the power adapter. Nothing. Maybe we'll disconnect the power. Nothing. Let's check and make sure we got some connections here. So. Okay, may have had the uh, TTL device in the wrong mode. So after briefly looking it up, let's, uh, let's give this another go. Ho oh ho! Man, will it actually bring this thing back to life? No. Okay. Maybe we need to hook the power back up again to the power supply. Okay, so after doing some more research, I think that this PSP does not support what was called DDC9, which is the unbrick software that you put on the memory card in the PSP. What I believe is that this one requires something called a jig kick clone because I believe the date code is a 1C. What that means exactly, I, I, I don't know. Um, so I made the new memory card and uh, let's try this again and see if we can actually bring this back to life. And if, uh, if this doesn't work, I, I don't know where to go after that, other than just waiting to see if they make the uh, other software support this particular version at some point in time. Um, but anyway, let's, uh, let's give it a try. So let's, uh, so I've got the new memory card in the unit. Power is on. Let's slide the battery in and see what happens. Holy crap. It turned on and then turns off. So maybe what I need to do here. Is maybe I need the power from the so let's see if it see if it works this time and I don't think this is gonna work nope shuts off okay well back to the old drawing board okay so after some more research and just taking a stab at it here, I thought maybe uh, my micro SD to memory card stick adapter was bad because that seems to be what everybody uses for these. So I, you know, went on Amazon, picked up another one, you know, 10 whopping dollars um, and made a new flash card. I used just a tiny little eight gig micro SD card that I had made a new SD card and I've got my 
bench power supply set on 4.2 volts. And let's plug it in, see if she comes back to life. Here we go. Oh yeah, wait, we have to start the software first on the computer. So it's running, here we go. All right, it worked this time. Amazing. Okay, so the software is doing a check of the flash. This takes a bit of time. But holy smokes, it worked. Unbelievable. So what the software is going to do is, yeah, there it goes. And now it's going to actually flash the 6.20 firmware back onto the device. And there it goes. So this PSP is seconds away from being unbricked. That is, unless the flash memory has a problem and then it's not going to be good either. Okay, flash written. Now it's going to verify it. This is exciting. All right. It says it worked. Wow. Okay. Turn the power off by just pulling our battery out. We'll plug in the power cord. See if we can prop this up so that you don't get a super glare. How's, how's that? Okay, here we go. Well, green light on the power, that's good. Memory light card is flashing. Yeah, she's not bricked anymore. Okay, so it's October 17th, 6, excellent. All right, let's test out the, uh, the drive and see if it works because nobody knows. How do you put these in here? Hmm, just like that. All right. Perfect. So now I can clean it because it's got some nice fingerprints on it. Well, moderately clean, I guess. There's some good scratches on that screen there, but yeah, it was only 40 Canadian bucks, so whatever. And I did wasn't buying it to like, you know, be my prize possession PSP. I wanted to unbrick it to see if I could do that. And I did. So, hooray. All right, that's it for today. We'll see you in the next video.